Hello and welcome to Highway. Beautiful, isn't it? It's Mount Abbey. It's been standing here for 800 years. And Mount Abbey itself was a center of Christian life hundreds of years before that. Mind you, the Abbey isn't as it used to be. Once it had the tallest spire in all England, but it was blown down in a storm 500 years ago. And then one of the towers fell down. But up there might be the bit of roof on which a monk called Elmer stood before he jumped off. In the 11th century, that was, wearing a pair of homemade wings, trying to prove that men could fly. He did as well, kept going for a furlong, he said. That's 200 yards or meters, I suppose. It's been a busy place since then, doing well out of the wool trade. And it still has the picturesque weaver's cottages and some very fine traces of the old town. But the glory of the town has to be what remains of the abbey. Now the parish church, and only about one third the size it used to be. George Herbert used to come here when he was a vicar in Wiltshire. And I'd like to sing one of the many beautiful hymns taken from his poetry. This was actually the first. the television column for the local paper is with me now in the high street. His actor, James Grout, known as Inspector Morse's boss and many other things besides. Welcome, Jim. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What's so good about living in Malmesbury? Well, we've been here for 14 years now. We have comparative newcomers. Yeah. But uh, in a newcomers. word, what's good about it are the people who live here. They are very kind and caring people. We love them very much. This is a great Arctic ah. cross, isn't it? Yes. Now, this is our pride and joy. They say it's the best in England, which is another way of saying it's the best in the world. <laughs> is, uh, it's in good reserve. nick, isn't it? Marvellous nick. Mm. We're very proud of it. This house is very near where you live, Jim, isn't it? Yes, indeed. It's almost next door. It used to be a workhouse, isn't it? Right. A terrible so place I believe, workhouse, in 18 they? something or other. I'm yeah. no historian, but it was. Uh, yeah. Yes, they were pretty awful places. Uh, families were separated, of course. Wives were separated from husbands, children from their parents. But they were still going in the 30s, weren't they? Yes, they were indeed. Yeah. This one, of course, closed earlier than that. It's yeah. now a very desirable residence. But yeah. yes, in the 30s, yeah. they were still there. Of course, this time of year, we're always around of the, of the poem that you performed before the Princess Royal. Yes, I was very privileged to do that. Yeah. It's a famous poem. Everybody knows the first line. But not everybody knows the rest of the poem. It is Christmas Day in the workhouse, and the cold, bare walls are bright with garlands of green and holly, and the place is a pleasant sight. For with clean washed hands and faces in a long and hungry line, the paupers sit at the tables, for this is the hour they dine. And the guardians and their ladies, although the wind is east, have come in their furs and wrappers to watch their charges feast, to smile and be condescending, put pudding on pauper plates, to 
be hosts at the workhouse banquet they've paid for. With the rates. Oh, the paupers are meek and lowly with her. Thank you kindly, mums. As long as they fill their stomachs, what matter whence it comes? But one of the old men mutters and pushes his plate aside. Great God, he cried, but it chokes me. For this is the day she died. Last winter, my wife lay dying, starved in a filthy den. I'd never been to the parish, but I came to the parish then. And what do you think they told me, mocking my awful grief? That the workhouse was open to us, but they wouldn't give out relief. So I. I told her the house was open, and she'd heard of the ways of that, for her bloodless cheeks went crimson, and up in her rag she sat, crying, Bide the Christmas here, John. We've never had one apart. I think I could bear the hunger, but the other would break my heart. I rushed from the room like a madman and flew to the workhouse gate, crying, food for a dying woman. And the answer came, too late. They drove me away with curses. Then I fought with a dog in the street and tore from the mongrel's clutches a crust he was trying to eat. Back through the filthy byways, back through the trumpet slush, up to the crazy garret, wrapped in an awful hush. My heart sank down at the threshold, and I paused with a sudden thrill. For there, in the silvery moonlight, my Nance lay cold and still. <laughs> there, get me gone to your dinners. Don't mind me in the least. Just think of the happy paupers enjoying your Christmas feast. And when you recount their blessings in your smug parochial way, say what you did for me too. Only last Christmas day. The medieval porch of Malmesbury Abbey is a great place to shelter on a day like this. Malmesbury had his own bishop, what's called a suffragan bishop. With me is Peter Firth, who is the suffragan bishop. What is a suffragan bishop? Well, he's simply an assistant bishop. You can only have one diocesan bishop, and this is the Diocese of Bristol, and there's too much work for one man, so we share it. I see. But the buck stops with my colleague. Tell us more about the Christian connection. Well, this building goes back to about 1160, but the, the real big man in this whole setup is St. Aldhelm. He was a monk here around about the seventh century. Um, he founded the monastery here. Uh, he was a, 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 an educated man. He knew about the sciences of his day. He was a musician. He was a poet. He used to sing Christian songs to people in the street. He was a learned man. And that's the reason why there's a monastery here, because people like him brought England into the civilized world in the seventh and eighth centuries. A lot of people might think this is an area where the Church of England gets a pretty easy ride. Is that so? I think it probably used to be, um, but things have changed in the last, well, I say 20 or 30 years. Um, 
housing is a problem here, for one thing. Mm. Um, this is a very attractive area. Uh, a lot of commuters have begun to sort of live here and, and move out from Chippenham either to London or to Bristol. Mm. Uh, a lot of people retire here now. Yeah. Uh, there's very little rented accommodation. And I, I think about a year ago, it was found there was about uh, getting off at 200 people sleeping rough really? within five miles of Malmesbury. Yeah. Yeah. The role of the church is exactly the same as it always has been. I mean, and a place like Malmesbury, it has a marvellous opportunity to be the church because it's not a big community. No. This church is right in the centre of it. And there is a chance for this lovely building and its community to actually uh, be a, a, a congregation for the village. A living church. Uh, that's right, that's mm. right. Here in Malmesbury, there's a special school for children with physical handicaps. It's run on Christian principles by the Shaftbury Society. The work they do is just marvellous. But what's unusual here is that the school is also the base for the Christian pop group who really get involved in the work of the school. They used to be called Heartbeat, and they've had a lot of success with songs like this. Now look out for the new generation ministries. With me is Philip Drake, who is the head teacher here. Philip, it's a wonderful atmosphere. What makes it so good? Well, it's an atmosphere that is caring and supportive to all. Yeah. It enables the uh, young people to reach the potential of their aspirations. And that is done by having a staff who are highly professional in what they do. They're very committed to what they do. Um, many of them have got a, a very strong Christian faith and they are very tolerant of each other. So we have a wonderful working relationship in the school. Yeah. Do the students have to have a Christian background? 
No, not at all. We are a, an approved school uh, by the Department of Education and Science, and we have to meet all their requirements. And so any child could come to the school, irrespective of colour, faith, creed, um, providing they meet our admission criteria of having a major physical disability mm -hmm. coupled with a, a, a learning dif yeah. disability. Um, we, we would take them and we would make provision for whatever their needs were. Without a song, the day would never end. Without a song, the road would never bend. When things go wrong, a man ain't got a friend. Without a song, that field of corn would never see a flower. That field of corn would be a desert now. A man is born, but he's no good somehow. Without a song. But sure as I know, the Jordan will roll. I'll get along as long as a song is strong in my soul. I'll never know what makes the rain to fall. I'll never know. Makes the grass grow tall. I only know there ain't no love at all without a song. Without a song, a man ain't got a friend. Without a song. We got a bit Rosie Exton now. Mulberry was once a great centre for lace making. Rosie, that's beautiful work. Tell us about it. It's a traditional Malmesbury pattern mm -hmm. called the pea. They lie like peas in a pod. Uh -huh. How long does it take you to do a border like that? To do a border for a hanky takes me about a month. Does and it? I make lace every day. Good heavens. What exactly are you doing there? Those are bobbins, aren't they? These are bobbins, yes. Yeah. And it's all worked in sequence. The pattern is marked out, and so it must be absolutely accurate because the accuracy of the lace depends on how good your pricking is. Rosie, your husband was a commoner at Malmesbury. What does that mean? Yes, David was an assistant Burgess. Mm. The old corporation are made up of the descendants of the men who turned out in battle against the Danes with King Athelstan. And he gave them five hides of land, a hide being 120 acres. They still have that land to this day. They don't cultivate it themselves, but it's rented out to the local farmers. But to be a commoner, you have to be either the son of a commoner or married to the daughter of a commoner mm -hmm. and live within one and a half miles of the center pillar of the market cross. And from me to you outside that mile and a half, as the jackdaw flies, yes. too far out, <laughs> hard luck. Now, you, you've got grown-up children. Are they going to take up their commoners' rights? Provided they could get somewhere to live in the town, yes, then they could be householders and then they could take up their inherited right. But that's not easy, is it, to buy a place in the town? <sighs> Almost unheard of. Is it? Even places to rent. A lot of the inspiration for all that beautiful lace comes from nature. Here at what's called the Arboretum at Western Burt, just outside Malmesbury, man and nature have combined to make something quite special one of the world's best collections of trees and shrubs, even at this time of year. The girls from nearby Western Bird School are going to sing music specially written for them and for the turn of the year.
We all know that not everything in a town like Malmesbury can be as cosy as it seems. With me is Ken Silverstone, once the mayor, now chairman of the Housing Association. And he's got a story well worth telling. Well, the situation was that when I was mayor about, about two, three years ago now, um, it was fairly evident. You met an awful lot of people, young people that had no home. The mental stress that those people suffer and when you're older, it doesn't seem to yeah, matter quite yeah, as much. Yeah. But to a young person who can't get married because of this sort yeah, of frustration, is, is yeah, frustration. Yeah. frustration. Yeah. There's a single girl, she's about 18. She was abused by her stepfather, had to leave home. There's a, a, an ordinary couple, married young couple. They're living with their in-laws. The brother and sister there. The brother has to sleep on the sofa. I've got, what, 40 cases on my file at the moment. So how many houses do you propose to build? Well, uh, we're going to build 20 here. Yes, yes. And they'll be for rent. They won't be for sale. I see. So where did the money come from to build these houses? Well, normally the, uh, the money comes from, uh, it's government funded, mm. the housing corporation, yeah. but uh, they haven't got the money. The district council or public money can't be used. So we're privately funding. Oh, yeah. uh, these, this development, yeah. yes, it's going to cost about £400,000. The Trump poet W.H. Davis, a Welshman, was born 100 years ago this year. He knew a thing about homelessness, but he spent his last few years in a village not far from here called Nailsworth. And actor David Goodland, who lives there, and Frank Evans, a Bristol composer and guitarist, have put together a show based on his writings. Here's a bit of it, the most famous poem Davis wrote. What is this life, if full of care we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the boughs and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life, this, if full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. You have to keep your eyes open, don't you? I wonder if Brother Elmer kept his open when he threw himself off the roof. The story goes that only consciousness of his rash attempt brought him down. It's amazing what people can sometimes do when they know what they're part of. I'm 
neighbor the bell of creation is swinging in me I look for the life that is living forever in all of the things that are coming to be I look for the life that is living forever and all of the wine it is looking Well, that's all from Malmesbury. Next week, how we come from the ex-estuary. I'll see you there. <laughs>